Hello Wobblies! Welcome to Wobbly Outer Outdoors. I'm Chris and this is a follow-up to our Grail water filter review. After we did our video review of the Grail Geopress and Ultralight water filters, in the comments Alina asked us if we had tested the water before we used the filter and then also again after we used the filter to see if it really works and if we didn't then how did we know that it wasn't a scam? It's a valid question. For our reviews we share our experience with the product and try to introduce you to the product, how it works, its features and the claims that the manufacturer makes. For some things like testing water filter efficacy, we don't have the lab facilities or the funds to get that information for you to prove up that part of a manufacturer's claims. We went to Grail's website to see if they had anything published online in the way of an independent lab study that backed up their claims about the effectiveness of their filters and what their filters removed. We didn't find anything. So we sent an email to Grail asking them for documentation certification that proved their claims. And while we waited for their response, we continued searching online. To my pleasant surprise, I came across a blog post that covered exactly what Alina was asking us if we had done. It covered the vast majority of the different testing principles, what the different types of tests were, the different types of filters, any regulations, a full gamut. It is a very thorough blog post. We'll put a link to it in the description. That blog post is by Widener's Guns Ammo and Shooting Blog. One of the filters that they tested was the Grail Ultralight. In the test that Widener's had done, they looked at the bacterial removal, the virus removal, and the cyst removal. They compared what was advertised by the manufacturer as well as bacteria, virus, and cyst removal in their lab test. This is what Wideners said about the Grail Ultralight. Grail claims their filter is tested to NSF standards 42 and 53 to protect against bacteria, cyst slash protozoa, and viruses. While experts don't consider NSF 42 and 53 adequate standards for survival filters, we confirmed Grail's claims. It's a viable option that markets itself honestly, thus earning a pure rating. Widener in their blog describes what they mean by pure and other ratings that they use in their system. We also received the email response from Grail. This is what Jessica of Grail had to say. Thanks for your inquiry. Please find the requested test results attached below for your review. Please feel free to reach back out if you have any further questions. Kind regards, Jessica. There were three attachments to the email, two PDFs, and an Excel spreadsheet. What we were hoping for was the independent lab study test results on that lab's letterhead. One of those files was like that regarding the microplastics. The Excel spreadsheet specifically covered a lot of specific items that were tested for to see how they were filtered out over several tests. We appreciate Alina asking the question and even though we couldn't answer it ourselves based on information that we had gathered, we did feel better that we could at least find the information to share with her and that it was done independently. And ultimately, that's what her question was, is how can we find a way to prove up what these manufacturers are saying when we ourselves don't have a way to test to prove it? And that's what independent lab studies do. So this little short midweek video is one in a new series that we're starting called Musings from the Mott. A mott is a small group of live oak or elm trees. We have several small groups of live oak trees. So that's the name we chose. And in this series, we hope to bring you follow-ups and interesting topics that may come up in the comments of our videos. So let us know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching Wobbly Otter. We love you, and we hope all your tomorrows are bright. Until next time.